All right, guys, we're back, and it just, things occur to me, and it's, I understand now why people's e-collar training is failing. It's their methodology that's failing. It's their, me the, what they're trying to do is apply the e-collar to their current methodology, N not understanding that it's failing because of the methodology. Hi, Crezzo. I don't know if you speak English. I hope you do, Crezzo. Uh... Hi, Lucy. Oh, Lucy, I, I want you to take notes on this. This is why these people's e-collar training is failing. And I know you understand all this, but they're trying to apply the e-collar to a flawed methodology. So it's only an amplifier. It's amplifying, their, and then it's failing. They're blaming the e-collar. And this girl, hopefully she's watching, because I did give her the link to my, uh, I'm going to post it in Understanding Dog Training, the most terrible uh, e-collar video claiming you've never seen e-collar training like this low lowest level stimulation it's, it's absolutely awful so I said please remove this video it's how to introduce the e-collar the dog was sitting on a cot and she's in there hitting the collar I said please remove this so she blocked me so and I I turned into the troll that's what happens Lucy <laughs> you saw the fangs and I said it's terrible get better you know get be so she emails back I've seen your work on YouTube, I was disgusted. Uh, then I really went off on her. I said, "That's hilarious." Uh, you know, <laughs> they need. There's they're coasting and boasting, is what it is. I understand they're on the chat board boasting that I'm an e-collar trainer, not understanding that you're just a trainer that's applying that to your methodology, and that's why it's failing. Not working. Hi, Tony. This is what's wrong with these people. Anyway, but this is the book I've got. And I'm going to tell you why you need to read this book. And it's not because of the e-collar. You've got to keep in mind that they were doing what the best they could with the tools they had at that time. And they understood, use the lowest level possible. They, they were not thinking outside that realm. They were only thinking, we've got too hot, we've got to go lower, 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 until they figured out, now that's not working, we'll get a pager. None of these people understand that. And if you said that does not make any sense at all, lady, what are you talking about? A pager? Just go lower, lower, lower. There's no caveats. So I'm not going to let this woman boast this is e-collar. I'll post the work so you can see it. Like you've never seen before. Stop your coast and stop your boasting and stop. start doing some real work. But the reason this book is good is because it's a book about dog training. It's a book about how to train dogs. If you just stripped away the e-collar part, we're talking about a book that was written by people that have master's degrees in behavioral science. And if you said Larry Crown, Sean O'Shea, they all are writing from that. Please. I think Sean O'Shea even graduated from high school. Somebody find out. You know, so if you're interested in learning, you do want to see dog training from the perspective of a behaviorist who competes in dog sports. If you said, I know all kinds of behaviorists that compete in dog sports, what's their names? There are some, but what's their names that you know? <laughs> You know, you've got these competition trainers, you've got these European guys that are very vertical scale with these Malinois and stuff, you know, but that doesn't, you know, honestly to me, that doesn't make you any kind of e-collar expert. I don't know why every e-collar trainer goes and gets a Malinois. Anyway, but what I wanted to read, and I can't find my glasses, I, I, they were last sitting here. The only thing I can say is I haven't found them chewed up, so they might still be, but this this book, you can still get it on eBay, and it was the largest selling retriever book of all time. And if you ask all these newbies about this book, they don't even know what Tritronics is. They don't know anything uh, older than Mini Educator. If you want to know the worst e-collar on the market, uh, Greg's uh, Mini Educator, any of that garbage, I, I got him right here. Anyway, but what the purpose of it was, and I'm going to tell you, if you just read this for the point of talking about when to start the stimulation, that alone they're doing it wrong. It's, it's always, we're going to take in account the fact that we're human and flawed and have more time in any way. 
So you're always going to be better to start it slightly before than after. If the dog starts to do what you tell it to do, and then you're hitting it, though, honestly, the pager stripped a lot of that away. You have to remember this was written before, maybe five years before they invented the pager. i got to get my lights because I don't have my glasses. <laughs> this is like, oh, my God. Everyone always threatens to send me glasses, but they don't get they never did. I did not find them chewed up, though, so. If I have more light, I can read. I'm not that blind. I'm not that blind. But that's why you have to learn to, uh, that's why you have to learn to do the remote by feel. You have to say if she can do it, she can't even see. All right, but this is what they talked about. And this book explains the system for training retrievers. It's been developed by Jim and Phil Stobbs directors of the Tritronic Training Center, because I remember that now. Tritronics, they did have a training center there. Uh, hi, Tony. And it's based on the principle of comparison. You make it easy for the dog to do the right thing and more difficult but not impossible to do the wrong thing. Uh, the dog makes a comparison and decides to do the right way without developing a resentful attitude. It is a system that can be applied virtually any dog without and it brings out every dog's best performance regardless of temperament and that holds true I mean that's true today if you said what you're doing is just a trickle down from this mm -hmm. yeah exactly it says why dogs work the dogs we use today carry the natural drives of the wild canids from which they evolved they their most basic genetic influences are the drive to catch prey and kill or conquer it, prey drive, and the drive to defend themselves, fight or flight, submission, defense drive. Training a dog is most successful when you understand and work with these drives. I mean, that's why I say, if you're not training in drive, you're doing it wrong. And if you said, I'll go right now and find and show you drive, lady. You think that Dobie of yours has drive? Let me show you Larry's dog, Sean's dog, Jeff Gilman's dog. They're about to blow your ass. <laughs> Please. The training methods described in this book work because they are based on showing a dog how to channel its natural drives. And that's exactly, that's, you know, what I'm still doing today. You will not force your dog. Instead, you'll learn how to control your dog by giving directions to its natural impulses. Does that sound like impulse control? Or does that sound like harness the momentum? Lucy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to witness me breaking down like this. I really have a lot of respect for you. Um, because I know that you weren't exposed to these collars before, but you can accept it. Unlike anybody like that. What I don't like is people, one, that are small-minded, can't understand. People that have researched it and concluded that Constance better than the pager. I understand now that's my trigger point. All I've got to see is that. Anyway, so it's a step-by-step step process. The system starts by teaching the dog a thorough understanding it will need for its work. The principles of escape and avoidance training. The dog is taught to turn off, and this is, if you said this is what these people are doing now, I'd say, no, it's not. Low-level electric stimulation by performing, performing commands it already knows. When reinforcement is necessary, the dog will understand the reinforcement because it was already taught how to turn off mild electrical stimulation, in other words, a micro-refusal. It understood from that. Anyway, it goes on. I'm going to just read this part. And this is about the history of electronic collars, because this is where these people, this is where the disconnect comes, that these people that are claiming modern low-level stimulus, modern? Let me get you a modern cell phone from 1992. That one I had that's lost out in the field that the squirrels might have taken, that was only from like 19, no, that was probably like from 2006. So you're gonna go back uh, 12 or 13 years before that and you're calling what you're doing with the collar modern, oh, that is effing laughable. Remote collars have come a long way since the first crude devices were introduced in the 1950s. These devices were designed to break dogs of unwanted behavior, such as chasing deer or livestock, and they were used to force dogs to come in when hunters wanted to go home and the dogs didn't. When a dog wearing one of these collars chased the wrong thing or refused to come, lightning struck. The collars were so effective delivering powerful remote corrections that the trainers began exploring how these collars could be used to simplify other lessons. 
Unfortunately, the early collars were too strong to be used effectively to reinforce trained responses. Dogs that had been jolted, listen to this part very closely, because this is what happens, too often lost spirit and became afraid to work for fear of doing something wrong or they reacted to corrections with panic and lost the clear mind. And I always say that they've got to be clear in the head. When you're giving them the nick, they better be clear in the head. It became apparent that different electronic collars were needed before they could be used in a positive manner to motivate desired responses. Tritronics launched a major research effort, and they did, and nothing has happened since then. But I give them props. If they had not done that, I don't know where we would be. These people would be worse than they were. They launched a major. They went out there and looked for talent, is what they did. And if you said they're going to go out there now and look, oh, God, good luck. Um, I, I know you guys are like, yes, we don't need your editorializing. Okay, so it said, uh, Tritronics launched a major research effort to determine how electrical stimulation could be used to safely to motivate correct behavior in dogs, rather than just correction tool when dogs acted undesirably. Understanding that dogs are individuals with different temperaments and sensitivities, they developed a new generation of electronic collars that could be used to deliver very low levels. These modern collars, keep in mind, this is 1990-something, they were just calling it modern then, could be adjusted for each dog's temperament and sensitivity, giving the trainer the opportunity to create what a dog perceived as mild discomfort rather than a fearsome jolt. This improvement greatly decreased the number of training situations in which the collar could be used. These modern collars, again, that's exactly what these people are doing today. This book was written in 19... I'll figure it out, but some of you weren't even born yet. Uh, they allow the trainer to overcome distractions or perceived adversity by enabling him, and they're still saying him, uh, to increase intensity levels at the transmitter, this feature. And that was the first time they came up with a dial that could turn. Prior to that, you had to change the uh, contact points. All right, so this is what they're talking about. This is all they had back then, the features. It had continuous stimulation, and that's what these people are still using today. Stays on as long as the handler holds the transmitter down. Variable intensity. Oh, these collars apparently only had constant. Had they not even invented the nick yet? Oh, my God. They didn't even invent the nick when this was written. The handler can modify the stimulation level within the range set by each intensity plug. Yeah, no, they didn't have the dial. I'm pressing different buttons on the transmitter. Okay, I do remember. I think there was a low high. You could put a you could put a two in the collar, and then you had a high two and a low two. But if that if the if the high two wasn't high enough, you had to put in three. If the low three was uh, too high, you're screwed. So that's what you guys have to understand. Oh no, they did have momentary. Okay. Some models of Tritronics deliver one or the other type. Okay, so there was two different kinds. Your selection of the model type will depend on the dog's temperament. With continuous, the collar delivers stimulus, stimulation as long as you hold it down, up to 10 seconds. Okay, that was back then. It was only 10 seconds. They did actually reduce it to 8 and went back up now to 12. Oh, God. On the advice of stupid people that told Greg to do that and... Uh, dog being the lemmings that they are so fearful somebody would buy greg's collar instead of theirs they changed it to 12. they're, they're all sick in the head the momentary call the momentary the collar delivers a brief stimulation that stops automatically after a brief period no matter how long you hold the button down this is designed to elicit a quick response and is useful reminding experienced dog what it's supposed to do it's most effective after the dog knows how to respond to the constant when given a command. And that's honestly, that's, if you said, give me an example of this, Ang Angus. And they did. I forgot about this. This is very interesting. I, I've talked about this before. They had a praise button on these things. And what it was was a tone. Some Tritronics transmitters include a green colored praise button. And they, if they should bring anything back, they should bring this, which when pressed caused the caller to emit a high pitched tone. Well, maybe you could do it yourself. Maybe that's why all the callers have the tone. I haven't read this book in 20 years. I'm going to, though. 
The tone allows trainers the opportunity to transmit a good dog signal at the instant the dog makes a correct decision, such as going through an obstacle or passing attempting diversion and continuing on a straight line. I'm glad I read that because I think I'm going to. I think we need to definitely explore that. If you got a button right there, the second it made the right decision, even though now, if you could do the if you could do the pager with the tone or something, I don't know. there's there's a lot of things you can do. We'll discuss how you can condition the dog to respond to the praise tone. So it's kind of like a clicker. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go out there and train Angus right now. But all of you need to get this book and read it because it's a dog training book, and of course. If I get a German Shepherd book that was written in the 90s, I understand a lot's happened since then. But the theories of training in this book are still valid. It's, you have to mod, if you said what you, it looks like all you've done is taken the tools they've had and moved forward with the method. You caught me. And for all these other people, to say, for this woman to say, oh, it's disgusting. You'd rather use constant. And the pager's disgusting. I'm freaking them out. It's just disgusting. It's going to go down one day, and they're going to say, she's just breaking down. Hi, Sally. Is it working? It's not working? Am I not there? Anyway, guys, I'm going out right there. Sally, just stay tuned. I'm getting ready to go get Angus. I'm going to try to find those keys. I've got a new little key ring. Oh, I'm just going to make a new key ring for him to find. So I'll be right back.